Nauseam vomiting is a huge problem in the hospital, particularly in anaesthetics. If you have not worked with a patient who is either nauseous or vomiting, you do not work in a hospital. About 12 to 38% of people will have post-operative nausea and vomiting, resulting in an increased length of stay in hospital costs. So to stop this, you must employ a multimodal approach when it comes to your prescription of antiemetics. So before we look at the different antiemetics, let's see what else you can do to improve the chances of making a patient less nauseous. You can ensure good hydration, anxiolysis with appropriate medications, select your anaesthetic drugs carefully to try to minimise the use of volatile gases or nitrous oxide. You could use a total intravenous anaesthetic like propofol for example, and ensure good post-op analgesia as pain is very emetogenic. Let's look at the physiology behind nausea and vomiting. The vomiting centre is located within the medulla and receives afferent stimuli from multiple areas including the chemoceptor trigger zone, peripheral pain receptors, cerebral cortex which controls pain, anxiety, vision and taste, the vestibular systems and the cerebellar nuclei. It also receives signals from chemoreceptors and pressure receptors in the gut. Importantly here, the chemoreceptor trigger zone lies to the area postrema of the floor of the fourth ventricle, just outside the blood-brain barrier. Because it is outside the blood-brain barrier, it is well placed to detect noxious stimuli. There are loads of receptors in the chemoreceptor trigger zone. Histamine or H1, muscarinic, dopaminergic, serotonergic, opioid, alpha-1 and alpha-2 adrenal receptors. Effects at these sites will cause noxious stimuli to trigger the vomiting centre, and that's why we use drugs to modulate that. Drugs such as antihistamines exert their action at the H1 receptor in the central nervous system, and because they're a bit sedative, that probably adds a bit to their effect. Antimuscarinic drugs act at the muscarinic receptors in the vomiting centre and the gastrointestinal tract. Through this and a couple of other actions, they decrease gastric distension and decrease nausea and vomiting. Antimuscarinic drugs are probably most effective for motion sickness and opioid induced nausea. Dopaminergic acting drugs usually act in the D2 receptor, which are found in the chemoreceptor trigger zone and the vomiting centre itself. They can cause dry mouth and are really good for opioid induced nausea. They sometimes cause sedation and attack a cardia. Serotonergic or the 5-HT3 receptors can be found in the chemoreceptor trigger zone and the gastrointestinal tract. There are four types of serotonergic receptors, but 5-HT3 receptors are the most abundant in the chemoreceptor trigger zone. The 5-HT3 receptor antagonists are effective in the treatment and prevention of post-operative nausea and vomiting. They're also good for the nausea and vomiting associated with chemotherapy, which is where they're used extensively. Unfortunately, side effects include headache, flushing, diarrhea, constipation, drowsiness, tachycardia, bradycardia, and ECG changes. So quite a lot going on there. When stimulated, opioid receptors and alpha-1 and alpha-2 adrenal receptors in the chemoreceptor trigger zone can cause vomiting. That's why we tend to avoid these drugs if we're trying to avoid nausea and vomiting. Examples of opiates are obviously morphine and fentanyl. And examples of alpha-1 and alpha-2 adrenal receptor agonists are things like adrenaline, noradrenaline, phenylephrine and metaraminol. So the reason why I've gone through these receptors first before going through drugs is to show you that the approach that you should take towards prescribing antiemetics should be multimodal. You're going to hear this word again and again when we talk about analgesics, antiemetics and a whole host of other things in anaesthetics. So now we know all the receptors and what happens whenever you do block them, let's find out what drugs actually do block them. At the H1 receptor, which is a histamine receptor, we have cyclosine as our main contender here of 50 milligrams every eight hours. You can give it either slow IV, IM, or orally. Muscarinic receptors, the top contenders here, are hyacine and atropine, although atropine is not used as an antiemetic. They're anticholinergic drugs and will cross the blood-brain barrier. This will give us our typical anticholinergic side effects of dry mouth, blurred vision, medriasis, urinary retention, tachycardia, sedation. And the sedation bit's because it does cross the blood-brain barrier, so it gets in and causes psychogenic effects. So the dopaminergic system, drugs acting on D2 are metaclopramide, domperidone, droperidol. And droperidol is a buterophenone, which is in the same family as haloperidol. It's definitely not used solely as an antiemetic. Droperidol will also show mild action at the histamine receptor and have anticholinergic side effects too. Interestingly, you can also get dissociation and euphoria with droperidol too. Within the serotonergic system, we have the 5-HT3 receptor, which ondansetron acts on. So as we already know, ondansetron is a great drug for post-operative nausea and vomiting and chemotherapy-related nausea and vomiting. 
As we've already talked about, it has unfortunate side effects of headache, flushing, drowsiness, tachycardia, or bradycardia and ECG changes, which means you have to watch out in patients who might be susceptible, such as those with a cardiac history. So here are some interesting drugs that also have antiemetic effects. Propofol works as a 5-HT3 receptor. Benzodiazepines like lorazepam have central pathways that do the same sort of thing. And then cannabinoids such as the synthetic nabilone can be given to chemotherapy patients to have ton thematic effects of their chemo. Then, as some of our last line agents, you can use your P6 acupuncture point, which is in the wrist, to stop nausea and vomiting. So, you're going to hear it again. You're going to hear about the multimodal approach to prescribing antiemetics. You now know that we've got loads of different receptors that act on the vomiting center, so you need to try to block them. And it's really important in anesthetics because each subsequent agent you use to decrease post-operative nausea and vomiting will decrease it by a third, and this is called the rule of thirds. You need to start thinking intelligently about what receptors you're actually trying to block and think why are they sick. An example of this might be a patient with vertigo, so you know that vertigo is a vestibular disorder of the inner ear, so you know that the vestibular tract also has histamine receptors, you know that cyclazine works on histamine receptors, so why not try cyclazine as a first line agent? 